Welcome to the Fire and Earth Podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Gruber. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Welcome to another episode of the Fire and Earth Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jason Mefford. And I'm Kathy Groover, and we're here today doing some sort of beatnik poet thing. Yep. We've got the red and the black, and we're going to mime, or, or I don't know what we're going to do. But this was totally <laughs> accidental. We did not plan this uh, on Psalm, but it was kind of funny when yeah. we both got on uh, the air today. So this morning, you know, occasionally we do this prompt from the I Am apt. And the prompt this morning was, what about my career am I most grateful for? And I thought, you know, we talk about gratitude often and keeping gratitude journals. And we've talked about being grateful for health and being grateful for, you know, electricity and a home and a car. And I don't know that we've really talked about what we're grateful for in our career. So I thought that might be an interesting conversation today. So Jason, you do a lot of different things, as do I. So this could be, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I do a lot of different things and I've done a lot of different things you know, over my life, which is, um, yeah. So that, that question is like, what are you grateful for? Because I know a lot of times when I was doing different things, or even when I do some things now in my businesses, it's like, sometimes you kind of dread part of it a little bit, or like, you know, somebody, somebody called yesterday and they're like, Hey, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm stripping emails from LinkedIn. You know, it's my favorite admin (laughs) thing to do. Right. It's like, you know, I mean, there's just certain things that we end up doing, but I, because I've done a lot of different things, I think I'm really grateful for, um, a lot of the variety and exposure Mm. that I've, that I've come to Mm -hmm. over the time. Right. I mean, I started, I started in construction when I was eight years old, going to work with daddy in the Mm. summertime, you know? Yeah. And I mean, I, I did that. I've cleaned toilets. I've I've mowed lawns. I built furniture. I managed a store. Uh, you know, I, I've been an accountant in public accounting. I've done tax work. You know, still do some of that. I, uh, you know, was an executive in in corporations. Um, and and what's interesting, because especially my professional career from the time I graduated, um, you know, mainly audit risk compliance stuff, but a lot of coaching that I've done in here too, um, as of late. But I've I've had exposure and have traveled all over the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think I think for business, I've been in like thirty five different countries in the world just just from business perspective, right? Going there, training people, you know, um, but while I was there being able to see how people actually live, right? What they show on the sidewalk and then walking down the alleyways Mm -hmm. to see how people actually live. Yep. Um, You know, the types of businesses and different industries. I mean, I had a fireworks company as a client, you know, there's like two or two or three main (laughs) fireworks companies in the US, right? (laughs) No risk in that. No, no, you know, but fishing companies, banks, forest products, uh, manufacturing of all kinds, you know, financial services. It's like I've just had so much exposure to so many different areas that I think it's helped me become a much more well-rounded, but also maybe compassionate and understanding person because Mm. I've seen so much more of how the rest of the world lives and different than the way I was brought up or, you know, where I lived for, you know, most of my formidable years. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty cool. And, you know, I get to travel for work too. I don't know how many countries I've been to. I was counting continents because that was a little bit easier math. Um, Well, that one I've got five because I haven't been to Antarctica or South America. (laughs) Uh, Well, I'm going to knock off South America this year because we're going to Machu Picchu. I need to go to Asia and I need to go to Antarctica. I've never been anywhere in Asia. And then that's next year we're doing um, Vietnam and Cambodia. So I'm terrible. You're going to get there. there. (laughs) I'm going to get there. But so two things came to mind while you were speaking. Um, I also have had such a variety of jobs. Mm -hmm. I started working at my dad's paint store when I was a little kid. My first big girl job was at a grocery store. I was a checker at a grocery store. Nightmare. Um, And then I did the Domino's pizza route for a while. And then I started waiting tables. 
And then when I moved to California, I got a wait, table waiting job. And one of my customers, one of my favorite customers, one day he goes, you're way too good at things to be waiting tables. And I said, well, I'm an actress. And so, you know, I think that's what it comes to be part of the job, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, <laughs> what have I seen you in? I hop, you know, that's what you've seen me in. Um, and he offered me a job and it was like a big girl job. Like I had to have a like suits and a briefcase. And I was like, ah, I was so excited because I was like, well, my first role is an executive, you know? Um, and then that kicked me into the world of like working in offices. And once I moved to Santa Barbara, and I left the acting and the production jobs. I loved doing production, though. I really did. And I do miss performing. But I get to be on stage all the time as a speaker. So it's the same, same thing with a different outfit, different crazy voices. Um, but I realized the other day when I, I, I just graduated yesterday with my certificate as a psychedelic coach. So really excited about that. And I sat down with my coach and I'm like, okay, now I have to pick. Like, what do I want to do? I kind of want to phase up massage, but I'm doing the coaching. I'm doing hypnosis. I'm doing Reiki. I'm doing, you know, and I started to think about it. And I realized I'm kind of like the FedEx driver. I just deliver packages. It's not my job to know what's in it. It doesn't matter if I'm delivering baby food or a birthday present or supplies for art class. It doesn't matter what's in the box. So I realized like my job is to deliver healing for people. I don't do the healing. I help mm -hmm. facilitate the healing, but whether they're sitting across from me and I'm doing life coaching or executive coaching, or they want a Reiki session or hypnosis or psychedelic integration, or my career is, and my speaking and my writing, my career is delivering healing. And mm -hmm. when I realized that it was like, well, who cares why they're calling me? If they call me for a massage and I've got the space open and I have a good rapport with them, why would I say no to that? You know, at some point my body's going to be like, mm, and it's going to ask me to stop doing this. <laughs> Not yet. You know, I can still <laughs> doing that during the week. Um, so like today I'm doing one massage, I'm doing one hypnosis session, and I'm doing one psychedelic prep for a journey. What an amazing day. What an incredible day. Um, well, so I'm yeah. grateful for the fact that I get to touch the lives of so many people, whatever they need at that moment, you know, and sometimes it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, Kathy will give us a joke, but um, it's, it's. Oh, I always got them. Oh, you always got them. I know. And, uh, um, but it's, it's, it's interesting, right? Because I think, like you said, like the FedEx driver, I think a lot of times, and even for myself and a lot of my career, I mean, I don't like to be put in a box, which is probably one of the reasons why mm -hmm. I choose to do so many different things, because I like the variety in it, too. But, you know, when you get back to, you know, and I think for anybody listening, you know, sometimes people can be like, oh, man, you know, all I, what I do for my job, you know, it's not really that important. It's, you know, blah, 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 whatever it is, right? And I'll give you an example, right? Um, of, I think, when we start to see the deeper reason behind what we're doing, it doesn't matter what we're doing. It matters mm -hmm. how we're doing it and why we're doing it, yep. right? And so for me, you know, again, I... I know that there's something about my voice. There's something about my presence that has a calming and safe effect on people. Uh -huh. And so, you know, it's a, that's why I do three different podcasts <laughs> and I don't make money from them, right? You know, why you're do not I getting do? paid for this? Uh, no, just like you, you you're getting I make paid though, right? millions a year from this. Oh, man. Right? <laughs> yeah, what happened, right? But, but it's, you know, it's a why, mm -hmm. you know, of, of why I do it, because I know that that helps people. Yep. And, you know, I enjoy helping people, uh, you know, whether that's from, you know, the training or the coaching side, having people kind of change their beliefs or see the world differently. Because like I said at the beginning, I've, I've traveled the world so much and mm -hmm. I know, I, I know people or have met people, even though I haven't been to some of these countries, I've met people from some of those countries. Yeah. Right. And so it's like, I've got a, a lot better kind of cultural understanding of why things go on. And sometimes people scratch their head 
you know, about certain things that are happening in the world. And they're like, why is this going on? This is blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, if you understand the history and the culture, it totally makes sense, right? Yeah. Why each one of them are doing what they're doing. But anyway, but it's, you know, and so for me, it's like uh, taxes. You know, you said you were talking to your coach and you had to decide what you were going to do. Well, when I, when I graduated uh, undergrad, in accounting, I was going to go into public accounting and you have to make a choice, tax or audit, mm. typically. And so I'm like, I'm not doing taxes, so I go into audit, right? And that's been a great career path. Like I said, I mean, I, I saw so many different kinds of companies understand, you know, different ways that people make money and got to watch uh -huh. a lot yeah. of this stuff happen and really get in the operations of it. And I've always, you know, I've always done my own taxes. I've always done stuff for my business. I do, sure. I've done some stuff for my family, but I just, you know, I've always resisted that. But this last year, right, people continued to come to me with these horror stories oh. of their CPA. And, you know, it's like, oh my goodness, right? And they they kept coming to me asking for help. And it's like, you know, always before it's like, no, don't do that. No, I don't do that. Right. And finally, this last year, I'm like, screw it. Yeah. These people need help. And it's something that I can help them with. So, yeah. What do I do? I help people. Yep. Right. And and so it doesn't matter. And I, I had to kind of strip off that belief structure that that's not who I was right from 30 years ago when I made that decision. Nope. I'm an auditor, not a tax person. Right. right. Well, we can change our mind about things. Oh, I think we've talked about that on here huh. before. Haven't we, we have. <laughs> well, and to that point, it's, it's, it, this sort of segues into the other thing I was going to say, because here's a little practical thing that, that, that the listeners or the viewers can do. Um, years ago, I was feeling really burnt out. I was feeling really overwhelmed. I took myself to an only child dinner, which I would do occasionally. I'd just take myself to dinner and I was sitting in my favorite restaurant, William, which is unfortunately no longer around, having a great glass of wine. I was having some foie gras. I was waiting for my pasta to come and I had my journal and I was like, why am I so burnt out? Like, I'm just miserable during the day. I wrote down everything I had to do. Massage, Reiki, my podcast, everybody else's podcast me writing my books, me writing articles for other people, me writing blog posts for other people, me writing my own blog, me doing social media, me doing, and I looked at this list and went, well, good God, no wonder I'm exhausted. I'm doing like 5,000 things. And I ranked the, and speaking and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I ranked them. I put them in order of what do I enjoy doing most? And then I looked at those bottom three, which was social media, other people's blogs, other people's articles. And I went, well, what am I really getting out of doing that? Mm -hmm. Do I want to be doing that? I was not keeping up with my own. Well, I wasn't keeping up with my own blog either. And I'm like, I have very few followers. If you're not consistent, what's the point? So I shut my blog down. I stopped writing articles for other people because I'm like, yeah, it gets me a you know, hit back to my site, but I'm not enjoying it. It's not something I want to do. If I'm going to write, I would rather, if I'm not going to write for my own blog, why am I writing for other people's stuff? So I stopped doing that. And I farmed out at that point, I farmed out my social media. I was like, I don't enjoy doing it. It's not something I want to do. Just like, you know, the story I told about how I had the, uh, someone call me for a massage when I first started my practice and I couldn't because I didn't have any sheets. And I was mm -hmm. standing at home mm -hmm. doing laundry instead of doing the massage. I'm like, what is my actual job? And when I wrote down all those tax tasks that I had to do, and it's a little bit different because I'm self-employed. If you have a job job, you know, where someone else is, is directing what you do all day, it's not as easy, except that, you know, you still want to know what zings you and what can you give to your receptionist, secretary, assistant, another person in your, your division, um, figure out what is burning you out because it's probably not the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's probably one aspect of that thing. And what I'm grateful for, since that was our original question, um, I'm grateful for the fact that everyone that crosses my path for whatever they come to me for, I get to bring healing to them and I get to help them discover something. And you were talking about the doing. Um, 
I was listening to Eckhart Tolle the other day, and he said, the purpose of doing is to teach being. Ooh. And I went, yeah. I actually and, wrote that down. That's right here on my thing. And, and I went, as, yeah. And as we are being more in our doing, right, that's that's the real bliss. Yep. And I, and I think, you know, as you were talking too, because I know, you know, especially, I mean, cause I'm involved in kind of the spiritual space and everything too. And there's so many people that when they start kind of going on a spiritual path, they're like, I got to quit my job and I just got to become a guru and go hang out on an ashram and I've got to be a coach or a hypnotist or whatever. Right. But they, they're like, I gotta, I gotta give up everything that I've been doing and I've got to go down this other path. And I even felt that way for a long time. And yeah. I think finally this year, the last two years, I've started to embrace it more. And it's like, I'm really good at certain things because I've been doing them for over 30 years. Yep. And I know certain things that are easy for me to do uh, that are tremendously hard for other people, right? And so mm. like one of these, one of these tax stories, one of my friends, you know, she was behind. It was coming up on the October deadline. She hadn't filed her uh. taxes, so, right? She'd done the extension, but she hadn't done her taxes. She was freaking out. So much anxiety about it. I went and sat down with her for about an hour, you know, and, and I I didn't do her taxes for her, but I just kind of explained and she did them like on TurboTax or whatever one year. I'm like, you just do them this way. And next year I'll have my firm set up and I can do it if you want to. But yeah sitting down with the hour for her right uh gave her what she needed calmed her down right and then i checked in later with her i'm like you know hey you said you were going to reach back out did you have any questions she's like no i got it all done and i have to tell you i felt so empowered this year by mm. doing my own taxes mm. check right so so did i add value absolutely 100 percent. Right? was and, it and was it you know hands-on spiritual like mm -hmm. i'm no but it was and i think we forget that we all have the ability to heal i have talked to truck drivers to bus drivers to people on the street too we all have that ability to touch someone mm -hmm. in a very meaningful and um sort of enlightened way and i think that's the gift that we all carry if we just tap into that yeah and it doesn't matter what we do to make our money per se it's how we do it right because i remember one of the speakers that i knew ed robinson he he used to tell this story about um he'd go to this hotel often and so he would have often the same um person that would that would clean his room mm. and she'd leave little notes and stuff like that for him and and so he would chat up service people like mm -hmm. this when he was out at the hotels and this one woman you know it was the difference between having a job having a career and having a calling oh, this woman yeah. had a calling yep even though she was just cleaning hotel rooms yeah because she would do things like you know she'd come in and there would be papers everywhere in this in this hotel room right and so she She'd go and get another table, put another table in his room and, you know, stack things up and leave a little note for him, you know, saw that you needed a little extra, extra space here. So I brought in an extra table for you, you know, and that's, wow. like you said, that, that kind of work is healing too, right? Yeah. I mean, oh my God. Absolutely. People, people need doctors, people need lawyers, people need CPAs, people need truck drivers, right? Mm -hmm. But if we're in those roles, if we can think about them, not just as a career, but as a calling. Yeah, I love that. I wrote uh, that I down. That makes it huge. Yeah. Yeah. Job, career, calling. Well, and, you know, once again, this is a fabulous conversation. And, you know, look to what you do and see where you can find the being. And what are you grateful for? And, you know, sometimes maybe what you're grateful for is it pays the bills mm -hmm. or it allows you time to travel or money to buy that special bottle of wine or you know pick something that you're grateful for even if you think you're miserable in the position that you're doing there is something positive about that there's something that's making a difference in your life or the lives of other people that you can anchor that to and that will help you find that being exactly. so yay all right i am kathy gruber i can reach at kathygruber.coach
And I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. So go out, find your calling, you know, just start being a little bit different, uh, even in whatever career job that you may have. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode of the Fire Nurse Podcast. See ya. See ya.